We are live, we on, are live. <laughs> on live on YouTube. I am here with Sindhu Bloom, and I'm going to be filming an interview for the Doug McConey vlog. If you're here on YouTube Live, you probably already know what that is. But this is the first of many that I've promised of live YouTube streams. And then what you can find next Friday when I post next week's vlog is an edited version of this. Oh, I need to move this over a little bit. There we go. Um, and I'm going to start filming. I got the other camera here. We are inside PWC's Inside Tax Policy Studio. We're on our Washington, D.C. studio. You've seen this before on a number of prior vlogs. And I am very excited to have with me, as I mentioned, Sindhu Bloom. Sindhu is the host, producer of our Inside Tax Policy web series. What do we... TV show. Our TV show. So believe it or not... PwC, the world's largest public accounting firm, has our own TV show where we focus on tax policy. So maybe, Sindhu, before we even dive in, because I'm very excited to hear about your career, your path, your journey to become a TV host, which is frankly something that I aspire to do. <laughs> and you're doing it. I guess I, I, guess I am doing it. To, to be clear, I don't get paid for that <laughs> at, at all, uh, but a guy can dream. So first of all, what is inside tax policy? So after the 2016 presidential election, um, the firm decided they needed to move to video because we wanted to have a faster, more effective way of communicating with our clients because after that election, tax reform became a reality. And that's why it was set up. And I wasn't there during the original thinking about this, but they called me up to find out if I wanted to host a show. Excellent. Yeah. Well, and I was at one of those first meetings. I remember getting called down to uh, Orlando where we had our tax mm -hmm. leadership meeting and the Roy Weathers, who has been on the vlog before, and you've seen his interview, who's very visionary and thinking forward. And I remember in that room where we kind of brainstormed and, and came up with the concept and talked about, you know, how would we go about doing this? I mean, we had all these amazing experts, right? Like Chairman Camp, who's the cha mm -hmm. former chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Rohit Kumar, who is the former chief of staff for Mitch McConnell, Pam Olson, who led the Treasury tax. Right. Um, just a, and a number of those that have appeared either on the vlog or on the Cross Border Tax Talks podcast. And what would be a way that we could, you know, show showcase these people, and then also with the potential for tax reform, which at that point we didn't know would happen. We knew we had a full Republican Congress, a Republican president. So if there was going to be a chance for that, this was the time. Absolutely. And and that was the that was the vision. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe tell us a little bit about like your journey from a career perspective before you were at PwC. I mean, how does how does one become a host and a producer at a TV show at a public accounting firm? Uh, you kind of wing it. <laughs> you kind of wing it. But I started my career off as a print reporter. I was working at a small newspaper, um, which was a subsidiary of the Post, the Washington Post. Okay. And that's where I learned everything. I learned, you know, I was a beat reporter and I was writing every single day and it was amazing. It was a really amazing experience. I did that for two years. Then I switched over to tax where I wrote about international tax policy I at see. BNA's Daily Tax Report. Ah. I did that for five years. Was that your first foray into tax? Yes. And what was your education <laughs> background? So I have a communications degree okay. and I, I grew up as a writer. You know, I've been writing since I was a kid okay. and my favorite class in school was grammar okay. because I love words and I love dissecting them Okay. and dissecting sentences actually. Okay. So um, that was really natural to me. and. Uh, so I was at BNA for five years, and then I was recruited to PwC, where I stayed for 10 years, and I did basically this job, but in print. I see. And then I went away for six years, I had my own business, and I worked from home. We'll never do that again. Okay. But I worked from home, and um, then they recruited me back. Excellent. And so when you said you were kind of doing the print version of this, this was, you were helping out getting out the, the alerts that yes, we call them. The client, on, client facing emails. And yep. so you were working presumably with tax lawyers and tax accountants yes. and understanding the deep technical and then helping us try to communicate that in a manner that people can actually understand. Yeah. My, my vision always is that whatever I'm giving you, whether it's in print or in video, that you can sit down, relax and watch it or read it without having to turn to the Internal Revenue Code. Nice. 
So what, what do you enjoy the most about this, in, about your inside text policy, about being the host and, and producer of our inside text policy? It would be easier to answer what I don't enjoy because I love this job. I have the best job in public accounting. And I, you know, my I get to create a show and I produce it. So I have to think about what is it that our clients are most concerned about. Um, just as an example, I'll, you know, when we were having the partial government shutdown, uh, one of the things I had to think about was, all right, what do we need to tell our clients about what's happening at the IRS? Because invariably there are people, taxpayers, who are in the midst of decisions, conversations with the IRS. So where, where does all that stand? So I brought someone in, Kevin Brown, and we talked about that. All right, if a client has this happening right now at the IRS, what do they need to be thinking about? So we were able to deliver that immediately with analysis and to just tell people, okay, this is something you need to worry about, this is something you don't need to worry about. Um, so I really enjoy that part of it and thinking about, all right, what are what are the problems that we need to address? And there's always a next big thing, right? right? For us, the first year of this was tax reform. And after the bill was enacted, I had to think, all right, what is the next big thing? And I love doing that. And I mean, the great thing about this job is that every morning my kids see me excited and happy to leave and go to work and when I come back I've had a great day you know it's a great job that's really important and we talk, yeah. we focus on that a lot on the Doug McConey vlog is finding something that you you enjoy Absolutely. right and not all of us we're not saving the world every day and um but you know if you can wake up and enjoy what you're doing and I talk a lot about making a positive difference in people's lives mm -hmm. because we're not saving lives here right. but if you can make a positive difference in people's lives then that's really what what I'm focused on one of the other things that we talk about on the on the vlog is, you know, changes in people's career. I mean, you you talk you are so well versed at this point in tax law and international tax law, but you already talked about your background is in communications, right. you know, and then you I mean just got thrown right in the fire. I mean, we're here in Washington D.C. with some of the deepest technical experts on the planet, mm -hmm. and not just U.S. tax but global tax. You know, how did you approach when you showed up at PwC getting prepared for a job like that to deal with, you know, pointy headed nerds like myself <laughs> that want to talk about guilty and all these other provisions, which frankly isn't your education background? No, but the great thing I've learned from reporting, whether it was at BNA or at the newspaper beforehand, what I learned was that you ha it is OK to say to people, I can't I don't understand this. Can you please speak to me like I'm an eight year old? Right. and try to explain this. And so at my first job at the newspaper, even though it was general news reporting, I would have a picture of some family member in front of me and I would say, how am I writing this story to relay it to this person? How do I explain this to my mom? Mm -hmm. You know, And I mean, just as an example, I wrote a series of stories about polybutylene piping. And I thought, how do I explain this to right. my mother? You know, And make it interesting and make it relevant. So it's the same thing with tax. And you, ha you have to say, all right, there's obviously an issue here. How do I get someone's attention and get them to watch, get them to read? So it's the same principle. And so how do people watch this? Like, so how do people get access? I think we've got some, there are some of the videos that you can find from Inside Text Policy on YouTube. Absolutely. So it is a subscription service, so you have to be a subscriber to get it. And um, you can watch it on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet, anywhere. All right. Well, and I'll include that information below, of course. Please do. <laughs> but... Um, Tell me a little bit about the team that you have to work with. One of the things that we talk about here is team building and, and leadership. And so, boy, you have a lot of cats that you have to herd, yes. and, and, and <laughs> including myself. I'll put myself in that category of somebody who's been on Inside Tax Policy a number of times. But you know, you've got all the various tax professionals, a whole wide variety of different experts with a number of different personalities. We have an amazing studio team as well. We have our knowledge and insight folks that help with getting out the alerts and some of that type of mm -hmm. information. But talk a little bit about your team and what it's like to, to, to run that team. So I have a daily team that I work with every single day and they include people who write, people who do some research. And then when we're in here filming, as I mentioned, to you earlier, there are people in the studio mm -hmm. and they are kind of listening, they're writing, they're paying attention to what's happening in here and if everything is going well. I completely rely on them. And then everyone else, in terms of booking people like you, that has become a lot easier because the show has become a brand. And right. I think people recognize it, they know what it's about, and it's become a lot easier to say, I'd like to have you come in for a five to 10 minute interview. And that's really 
it. It's five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And to talk about X issue. So that has become easy. And what is tremendously I feel fortunate about is that I have access to people like you and I have access to people like Chairman Camp, Pam Olson, um, and on Monday, Lindsay Bristow. Right. So, you She's know, been on the vlog before. Yeah, All and right. so I'm interviewing her on Monday. So it's it's really phenomenal. I feel incredibly lucky to, to be able to do that, to reach out to people, these incredibly smart people. So talk about communication. So I know one of the things when I've seen you here and I've always impressed that people have the TV shows and just to be clear to make sure everybody, we've got nobody behind the the, the curtain on this no. particular episode. <laughs> this is this is the Doug McConey vlog style. But when we do have, when the curtain goes up and we've got all the lights on and microphones on, I know you're like communicating with Dimitri over there yeah. and like you've sometimes can't like, talk to, how does communication work when you're in the heat of the battle? How do you guys do that from you know, just from a practical perspective, how does that work? And I know you made, you made some comment too about like if maybe your hair is out, if something's right. out of place, like how right. does that work when, when it's going? So there, so first of all, that's an excellent question because my co-host Scott McCandless and I, when we have multiple people on the show, we will try to sit at op opposite ends of the desk so that we can have eye contact. So if I suddenly have a burning question, I will give him a look and he knows she's got a question. Interesting. So that is a good thing to do. And if, uh, Demetrius needs to get a hold of us, he can put some language up there on the touch screen. Um, and one time during an interview about Brexit, I was not smiling. And it is not a smiley topic, but <laughs> right. I was really not smiling. And so I think they had put up there, please smile. So that's a way to get our attention. And if it's something that really needs to be redone, they will just walk in. So what is the biggest di disaster? <coughs> what, what is the biggest disaster that has happened? I shouldn't say disaster. Do you have any like funny outtake stories or issues? Because and I also know that you have filmed not just within the studio. We've done it at our international tax conference right. in the back. But any any particular challenges or anecdotes that come to mind? Yes, there are a couple of guests who always have me in stitches. Okay. And last year we were filming an episode of Election Watch with Rohit Kumar. Rohit was at the touch screen. Um, Scott was traveling, so John Lieber was at the desk with me. He's in our national economics and statistics practice. And we I had to do four takes because... John kept... Whatever he said, whatever came out of his mouth, I was... I was I could not stop laughing. And for those that don't know John, he was on our cross border he's on our, gonna be That's on right. a new cross border tax talks. Or he's been featured John's been featured on a cross border tax talks. He also is a really good at Twitter too if so if yes. you don't follow him, he's got some very witty stuff, particularly for being an economist, right. I think. <laughs> I mean, like tax lawyers and economists are always aren't known for their no, but there, witty... are lot, there are a lot of funny people here. Yes, there are a lot of funny people here. But that was embarrassing because here I am in front of two senior people and I had to do four takes. But listen, if the guy's going to be funny, it, that's out of my control. All I right. can't handle that. Well, the next time I have go on, I'm, we'll, I'll see if we can <laughs> we can get you get you going. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your 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 personal life. I mean, one of the things that I'm fascinated with is moms that are able to balance work and life and everything else. As you well know, I, my only children have four legs. Um, and uh, but but what what are some of the challenges and what advice do you have for folks that are you know are, that are moms and trying to balance work and uh, and home life? Uh, well, first of all, it is incredibly difficult. Um, my husband works from home, and I don't know that I could do this job and thrive as well as I do without his support. That is essential. And uh, because he is there when the kids come home from school, my kids are 9 and 11. Um, and I, but, but I feel deeply that my happiness here is important for them to see. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of keeps me going. And um, the challenge is that I feel less engaged with what's going on at school. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem because I used to be, the six years that I worked from home, I was able to stop, go to the school and volunteer. I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that kept me involved and engaged in their lives at a at a different level. And But our conversations are different now, too. You know, Sure. How old are your kids? Nine and 11. Okay. Yeah. And um, during tax reform, during the height of tax reform at the end of 2017, you know, we were filming every day, right. three to four times a day, and it was we were it was just such great energy here. And I would go home at dinner, and I would like say, "Okay, this is what happened." And you know, and then at some point, my son just threw up his hands and he said, "I don't care about tax reform." And I thought, "What?" 
Be- believe it or not, I've gotten the same from Kelly before, so I, I can understand. I'm so sorry. She, she's very good at listening. She likes more about the personality than right. the technical stuff, which right. I have to remind myself. But uh, yes, I, I've gotten that before. Yeah. But yeah. Just from, from my wife, not not the four-legged children. But you know what? The, 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 what? what I'm so proud of is that now, if the news is on or whatever, you know, if they hear other adults conversing, they know what they're talking about. You know, they know what's going on in the world. And I also make them watch the State of the Union so they know, they're aware of what's happening and what's the messaging in our country. No, that's great. Yeah. And putting it in context and what we do in context, that, you know, that's certainly something that I try to do with, you know, the younger people that we're talking to as far as potential recruits. Right. And even, you know, that's the approach that I take on the cross-border tax talks to try to make things applicable to as many people right. as possible, but also still trying to get deep and, and technical as necessary. So, you know, one of the themes for this year's or for this season episode or this season three for the Doug McConey vlog is Be Well, Work Well. Right. Is I've really taken initiative over the last six months to try to get myself in better shape and be more mindful about what I eat. And I've shared that on the last uh, few vlogs of the season. I understand that you have a pretty interesting hobby that, that, that you do, which I'm actually very interested in. And there are a number of other YouTubers and that do this. But kickboxing yes tell, tell me kickboxing. tell me about this so i started kickboxing actually right before the tax reform bill was introduced everything is around tax reform right so um i was going two to three times a week and the first class that i did i was just drenched in sweat just drenched and i started losing weight really quickly really really quick because it's just working out your oh, entire yeah. body well when tax reform got underway that schedule I understand. <laughs> it was a little busy. Yes. So I've really started back in earnest. Okay. And I want, you know, my goal is always to go two to three times a week. Okay. And I just feel so much better afterwards. And, you know, you do. You sweat a lot. And your body is just, just revived afterwards. And I recommend it to anyone who can. Check with your doctor first. Right. Um, but it's incredible. It's really great. And I have great teachers. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's and it, it. I think one of the things that I found, I just used to hate exercising and didn't like it. So I think if you can find something that you enjoy, yeah. Yeah. that kind of motivates you to get to the gym. I've been doing this high intensity interval training, and yeah. I'm actually using a trainer that that Kelly has used. And for the first time, I think in my entire life, I actually enjoy exercising now. And I'm doing it during the weekends because I mean, just my schedule. It's really difficult it's to find the time and maybe I can try to get into a gym, but people who watch the Doug McConey vlog know my travel schedule is absolutely, absolutely insane. And I got dinner some nights. And so I've been trying to do absolutely two days a week or mm-hmm. on Saturday and Sunday, and then trying to find a day or two during the week to, to squeeze it in. But finding something that you enjoy, that's fun. And with, with my particular gym, like I've gotten to know a group of people and it's fun. Like it, and makes, it's, a, it makes a huge difference. Makes a, makes a huge difference. But the other thing that the be well, work well, um, program in our office has done for me is that I just started taking walks almost every day ah. for 15 to 30 minutes and I will leave my desk I will go out to get some fresh air and clear my head nice and I'm a gardener too so I love going out to look at foliage <laughs> okay it's just getting off your feet yes. getting the blood yes. flowing yes. I mean it's there's proven science behind that really really and, helping and I will never catch up to him but Drew Drew I'm always in competition with Drew Lyon another economist okay um, with steps Ah, I see. Yeah. And what do you use? Do you use some sort of tracker to monitor? My phone tracks it, okay. and I think you can, on your Fitbit, whatever, whatever. You, can, yeah. you can track them. Um, but, yeah, I will never catch up to him. He's like hundreds of thousands of steps a week. Oh, my gosh. And I'm nowhere near there. Okay. Is he a runner? He's or? a runner. He's see, a runner. that's... Yes, I know. <laughs> that's not really fair for to try to well, keep track, but... I used to be a runner, and okay. if I run, then it would make a huge difference. That, that but is, I'm walking. That is something I have very little interest in. Kelly's got me a little bit... I've done a few... I've done a bunch of 5Ks at yeah. this point, which is my <laughs> absolute limit. Yes. Like three Agreed. miles... A half an hour, that's about as much as I can say. I just don't like it, so it's hard to be motivated to do it. If I have headphones in, and I, I, I when I used to run regularly, I, that's when I would get my ideas. Okay. And now ideas come to me at 2 a.m. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> I get a lot of those yeah. as well. All right, Cindy, well, this is a question that I asked everybody that I've interviewed on the Doug McConey vlog. Just being a little introspective and retrospective at the same time. So if you had to give your younger self any advice, the young Sindhu Bloom coming right out of college, mm-hmm. what advice would you give yourself? Take more risks. Take more risks because I was really risk averse. Okay. And when I came out of college, I thought I've got to have a job. I've got to be employed by somebody. I've got to have health insurance. 
all, I, it was very structured. And I got a lot of encouragement from my brother to go and be a freelancer, and I didn't do it. And I wish I had. Okay. I really wish I had, but take more risks because when you're young, you don't have a family, you know, and you don't have all the trappings of adulthood. Right. That's the time to do it. And I didn't do it. Well, that's great advice. And I think you also heeded that advice later in your career because certainly showing up for inside tax policy, developing a yes. TV show for a public accounting firm was, was obviously a risk and hopefully one that you view as well worth taking because Amazing. like, look what's happened. I mean, like, the infrastructure, the people, and you've just done a fantastic job with it. Thank you. So Sindhu Bloom, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Sindhu. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to our first live YouTube streaming for our interviews. There'll be more to come.